Hey everyone, welcome to Homes for Beginners, where I show you how to do repairs around the house yourself. In this video here, I'll be showing you how to remove the carburetor, clean it, replace the gaskets, and replace the primer bulb on a Yardman Y26SS four-stroke trimmer. A similar procedure may also apply to other four-stroke trimmer models as well. A dirty carburetor will cause hard starting, idling issues, problems with staying running, and poor performance. Start by removing the air filter cover. It clips on at the front towards the pull cord, then pivots on the rear. Unclip it on the pivot portion as well. As a tip, use your phone to take photos along the way so you're able to reference the assembly, making sure everything is in the correct location. Then remove the foam filter. Using a Torx driver, remove the two fasteners. These holes go through the air box and carburetor. To keep all the hardware in one place here, I'm using my OEM Tools 25115 Magnetic Nut Cups. Made from durable ABS plastic, comes in a pack of two, and a rubberized magnetic base to keep all your parts in place while being able to stick the cup on any fair surface. A link to this will be included in the video description to Mobile Distributor Supply. Remove the plastic air box section off the rubber vent line and then remove. Make note of each of the line locations, then remove using needle nose pliers. Twisting the lines may help if they're stuck in place. Disconnect the throttle linkage. As you can see the primer bulb has dried out and deteriorated. These will cause running issues as well and they are fairly cheap to replace. Using a Phillips screwdriver remove the primer bulb plate. There will be four screws in total. Once removed, here you can see the primer bulb just pushes out of its location and it's badly deteriorated. For the new primer bulb, make sure the diameter of the base is the same, then push it into place. Those four screws held most of the assembly together. The black plastic piece is the primer bulb base. Next you'll have the diaphragm with gasket on the opposite side. The diaphragm will become hard over time and this is what is causing running issues as well. Here's the fuel delivery block with the needle assembly. To remove the needle, it's held on with a single Phillips screw that keeps the shaft into place holding the needle lever and a spring. Be extremely careful when removing this, the spring is small and can be lost easily. Once the screw is out, here's the assembly. The components are very small so don't lose them. Here's a look at all the parts that have been removed. It's important to split everything down so it can be properly cleaned. Using carburetor cleaner or a solvent, spray it through the ports, clean out any dirt or debris. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Some of these ports go in the opposite direction and you can risk having the cleaner sprayed back at you. Wipe it down if needed. Then I'll follow up with compressed air for added pressure to force out any excessive cleaner or remove any dirt. Always closely inspect everything, ensuring it's clean. It doesn't take much to plug up these small carburetors. There are also fuel screen filters. Make sure that's clean as well. You can hold this up to the sky or light. Make sure you can see light through it. A razor knife can be used to clean off the old gasket buildup. Do not damage the ceiling surface. Then clean away any of the loose material so it's not in any of the parts. Moving on to the main carburetor body, remove the leftover gasket and diaphragm. Don't forget to note its position. Scrape away any leftover gasket material if needed. This portion of the carburetor, I'm just using compressed air and a torch cleaning tip as solvents can attack the plastic. Pick a torch cleaning tip which is slightly smaller than the hole. Do not force them inside. These tips are abrasive on the sides and can open up the ports, so don't get too aggressive with them while cleaning. They're just intended to help remove any light debris, which solvents or air cannot. The one brass port fell out, so that was reinstalled. It just pushes into place. Typically, these will come with a gasket kit, and you may have a couple different gaskets to select from. Match up the old gaskets with the new ones. This is the old gaskets with the diaphragm still attached, but just to give you an idea how stiff they have become, 
I have found that fuel containing ethanol will cause gaskets to harden much quicker than compared to the gas not containing ethanol. I'll run only premium fuel in my yard equipment. Ever since I switched, I haven't had any issues with carburetors for cleaning. Now is the new diaphragm and you can see how flexible it is. This diaphragm gets put off to the side while I install the needle with the lever and spring. This part takes patience. Needle nose players can help with putting those components in place. I'll try to put the spring in the hole, then place the shaft with the lever and needle in place. Finally is installing that retaining screw. Once installed, here's a close up of the assembly. The diaphragm with the metal ring pushes on the lever, opening up the needle, feeding the engine fuel. Install the first diaphragm with gasket. Ensure everything is in the correct position and orientation. Align the gasket with the pins or fastener holes. Install the assembly with the needle. Make sure it's in the correct position too. Next is installing the diaphragm with gasket, the plastic base for the primer bulb, and finally the primer bulb and frame. Install the four Phillips screws in tight and evenly. I did take out the throttle plate to replace the O-ring. It just slides into place when the two Phillips screws are removed. The O-ring fits into a groove and a new replacement may come in the kit. Then install the two Phillips screws. There is a paper type shield on the trimmer. This acts as a gasket too. There is a good chance of this separating when removing the carburetor. The kit comes with a new gasket for the block. However, going over this material may cause some problems. I installed the gasket and it was held into place using two screws. The gasket is then traced out. Remove the fasteners and gasket. Then using a razor knife, cut out the paper type barrier so the new gasket can fit against the block. Once done, find the new gasket with the carburetor can go into place. The air box, backing plate, carburetor and new gasket is then installed. The screws are then installed to hold everything together and make sure the assembly is lined up. The fuel lines are then connected along with the throttle linkage. The foam air filter, if still good, can be cleaned with compressed air. Blow it from the inside out to push out any debris. Then make sure the air cleaner plastic cover and backing plate is clean too. The screws are then tightened. The air filter foam is then installed. And finally, the air filter box cover is clipped back into place. After that is starting up the trimmer, there is no adjustments other than the idle screw which may or may not need to be adjusted. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more home DIY videos. Thank you for watching.